so for today's question, you can assume that you work as a data scientist for an e-commerce company. And for this company, uh, they have a database containing these three tables here. So there's a transactions table, a products table, and a users table. So the transactions, um, each of them are uniquely identified by an ID. Each transaction is associated with a specific user ID, and you also have the quantity, the time it was created, and the product ID. So the product ID of that table links to the ID in the product table. And for each product, you also have the name and the price of the product. And lastly, you have the users table where the ID column links back to the user ID in the transactions table. And you have the name and the sex for uh, each user. All right, so let's get started with our first question then. Uh, the first question today is, uh, can you write a query that reports the number of users, uh, the number of transactions placed, and the total order amount per month in the year 2020? For those of you who aren't already familiar with Exponent, Exponent helps you get your dream tech career with our online courses, expert coaching, peer-to-peer -peer mock interviewing platform, and interview question database. Check it out at tryexponent.com. Uh, sounds great. Uh, if uh, you don't mind, I'd like to ask some clarification questions about the uh, expected output and also mm -hmm. about the data before uh, I start to talk about logic and start uh, querying, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Please go ahead. Uh, so yeah, looking at the table uh, structure, it looks like ID is a primary key uh, for all these uh, tables, uh, transaction products and uh, users table. Uh, and uh, it looks like uh, in the transactions table, we have something called user ID. And I'm assuming that is going to map to the ID in the users table and same uh, goes with the product ID here. Um, and, uh, and I'm also assuming every product um, that is in the transaction table is covered in the product table, uh, the way that it, there are no gaps um, between uh, these two tables. Are, are these assumptions uh, looking good or anything you would like to add? Yeah, that all sounds right to me. Cool. Uh, and in terms of expected output, um, as you outlined, this uh, sounds like a monthly uh, reporting where we'll be looking at number of users, number of transactions, um, and uh, also the total order amount. Uh, the way I think uh, I'm gonna be computing uh, order amount is I see uh, price column in the products table, and I also see quantity in the transaction. Uh, so I'm actually assuming I can multiply these two get, to get the total uh, order amount. For example, if a user is buying two product and the price is $10, the order, total order amount is gonna be $20. So two times 10, that, does that make sense? Yeah, that totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. cool. uh, yeah, so first thing uh, I'd like to do uh, is uh, usually explore the table uh, to see what kind of uh, data I have. Uh, it'll be interesting uh, to uh, actually note down all the data types uh, that uh, we have uh, in this table. Uh, one thing I can uh, tell right off of the bat is it looks like we don't have to use user stable. Uh, so that's uh, uh, because we're not gonna be reporting on name or gender uh, at the moment. Uh, so I'm gonna be okay. using the first uh, two table transactions and the product table. Mm -hmm. So let me do a quick uh, querying. Uh, cool, yeah, it looks like these tables have uh, data. Uh, so let me outline the logic now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group all stats by month. Um, and uh, I'm gonna get month from the created at, which uh, looks like a date time here. Uh, and then I'm gonna use a distinct count on the user uh, to get the user count, because it is possible that a user could have done two orders. Uh, but when it comes to the monthly report, uh, we, would, we would only count them once, uh, because that's one user. Uh, yeah, and that's then, look, point. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, uh, anything you would like to add on the logic? Otherwise, I'll uh, get st started with the query. Um, no, I think that makes sense to me. Cool. So I'm going to call this monthly reporting of KPIs. All right. So I am. Um, I'm actually uh, commenting on the logic uh, uh, first. Uh, so I'm calling this query a monthly reporting KPI. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm uh, pulling each row in the transaction. And I'm assuming each row in the transactions table is an order. Mm -hmm. 
And then, um, as I said before, I'm doing uh, price times quantity to get the uh, order amount. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of year, uh, I'm only looking at uh, 2020. Um, so what I'm doing is uh, I'm using date part function, SQL function to actually get the year uh, and making sure it's actually uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, in terms of the summary, uh, the user ID is gonna give me number of customers, transaction uh, table is gonna give me number of orders. Uh, and then order amount uh, is nothing but price times quantity. Uh, and I group everything by uh, month, uh, the way we will get this monthly report. So I'm gonna quickly run this and see what output we are gonna get. So the output uh, here is, uh, is monthly name, which is essentially pointing to the number uh, of month in a year. And then we have number of customers, number of orders and order amount. So I think this is uh, what uh, you were looking for. Um, okay, perfect. That sounds uh, really great. So is there anything else that you would like to improve in this query? Uh, yeah, so in terms of uh, readability, one thing uh, that uh, I usually do uh, in my big uh, queries is uh, I uh, create something called CTE, common table uh, expression, uh, especially uh, price times quantity could be confusing for new users to uh, read when they're reading the query. Uh, so uh, for that, I may uh, create CTE. Uh, I don't think it will impact uh, performance uh, that much, uh, but I, I still think that's a good way to write the query. Uh, mm -hmm. The other thing I could do is uh, I could order this by month, uh, the way uh, it's in the right order. Uh, fortunately, the table uh, that, that is given to me is in the right order. So that's why we are seeing um, it's um, ordered um, correctly. Uh, but in some cases, let's say this table is huge and uh, the dates are uh, kind of all over the place. Uh, ordering uh, will uh, give readability of the report. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so I'm curious then, like, what if you were to actually modify the query so that you could search over, uh, so you could do the same query, but over like multiple years, uh, what would you have to change? Yeah, that's actually a great question. Uh, so here, I'm actually filtering down only to uh, 2020. Uh, so if I were to uh, expand this, um, I'm, I'll need to do a couple of changes. One, uh, I need to uh, take this uh, filter out, uh, that way I'm looking at uh, the entire table, I'm not restricting any particular uh, year. The other mm -hmm. thing that I need to uh, think about is the, this month uh, name. Right now, I'm actually outputting the number. Um, so as we start to add more years, what happens is it is possible that uh, we will have orders for January of last year and January of this year. Uh, in my report, uh, if, if we run this initial query, the first query, it will all be clubbed into one. Uh, so what I would do uh, is, I'll basically change this to uh, reflect month name. Uh, so those are two uh, changes I think uh, I need to be making. That, mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Anything uh, you'd like to add? Um, nope, that looks good to me. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the next question then. So the next question then is um, who actually ordered the most? Can you write a query that will output the name of that user who has the most orders? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so now uh, we need to use a uh, user's table. Uh, let's say we want to output uh, the name. Uh, so the name is actually in the user's table. Uh, mm -hmm. So technically I can reuse, but, um, but I'm going to uh, start from scratch here. That way it's cleaner. Um, so I'm going to actually um, look at the... Um, users table, I'm gonna join transactions table and users table, uh, and I'm gonna use a user ID from the transactions table to connect with uh, the ID in the users table. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool, so in terms of logic, um, let me outline the logic uh, with you uh, so uh, as to make sure uh, you and I are on the same page. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna join uh, the transactions table, as I said, I'm gonna sort the uh, uh, output uh, by, number of uh, order, um, and then I can limit to one, the way I'm only gonna get the top uh, row. Uh, it looks like you only, um, uh, or you're interested in capturing the top user. Uh, so I'm gonna use a limit function, that's okay. Yep. Cool, so let me start coding here.
Okay, I'm doing inner join on transactions and users. And I'm grouping uh, this entire query by user ID and name. Uh, and here's where I'm getting the number of orders. Uh, so essentially every row in the transactions table is uh, considered an order. Yep. Um, and then um, I'm actually sorting uh, this in the descending order. And one final thing I will do is limit to one. So now if I execute, oh, it looks like uh, Rukshar Jarvis is the person who ordered the most. And uh, this person ordered uh, four um, orders. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm curious though, what if there happened to be more than one user who like uh, has the most orders? Yeah, that's a great question. So right now I'm using uh, this uh, limit uh, function or limit uh, condition uh, to make the query simple. Uh, but let's say there are a couple of people who ordered most. In that case, uh, I will uh, start to use window function. Uh, so there are window functions like row number, rank. Uh, if I were to use uh, those table um, and I can decide which one, uh, what I'm going to do in, in, in terms of a tie scenario, uh, do I want to uh, output all the names or do I want to only output one name uh, based on what I want to do I can use uh, either of these uh, window functions mm -hmm. okay yeah and are there any sorts of like uh, trade-offs between using the limit statement versus the window functions uh, yeah in terms of um, limit uh, it, it is um, actually I would say it's not scalable uh, so it works for this query uh, because I know what the data is because I've um, uh, seen the data in the first uh, query uh, but as uh, if we were to expand um, this to a bigger table, that's usually the case with uh, uh, companies, uh, then window function is more uh, appropriate. Uh, we can actually uh, do uh, partition by uh, different columns. We can play around with the sorting. Uh, we can play around with how we are going to rank uh, with window function. Uh, so window function offer more uh, functionality for uh, both scalability and also for large uh, database. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, uh, so I think this is a fantastic place to pause. You did a really great job on this uh, and I'd be really curious to hear from you. What do you think went well and what do you think you would change? Uh, yeah, so uh, I, uh, I think uh, the queries themselves are uh, great. Uh, I could have uh, done a little bit of optimization uh, if I had more time. Uh, I could have used a CTE uh, and uh, maybe thought about uh, performance um, as a factor uh, if we are going to scale this query. Uh, yeah. But yeah, in terms of um, the queries themselves, I feel confident that uh, it uh, answered the questions that uh, you had asked. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the, I, I feel that it went uh, really well. Yeah, I totally agree with a lot of those points, actually. Um, I really, in particular, like that you were very careful about asking clarifying questions and verifying that your assumptions were correct before plunging into answering the questions. And I like the structure that you had of um, writing in comments, first of all, like what uh, the logic for each uh, sub part of the query that you're going to write was going to be. So that made your queries really clear, especially for these queries that are longer and more complex. I think that's really helpful. Um, and I really like that you were careful about the details too, like um, using distinct count to make sure that you didn't end up with duplicate rows. Um, yeah, and um, as for what might be improved, I do agree, like uh, it might've been interesting to hear about some optimizations. So one thing that might be interesting to talk about is um, what if you were to run these queries, like what if these are queries that you needed to run like repeatedly over like, uh, all the time to like generate like automatically updating reports or something like that. Are there any sorts of optimizations that you can make to the actual tables themselves to optimize for these queries? Uh, yeah, so indexing is is a common thing uh, that uh, we use in database to uh, make uh, queries faster. Uh, so mm -hmm. um, what I would do if I were to design um, these tables uh, is figure out what are uh, primary keys, uh, what mm -hmm. are some other uh, foreign keys, uh, and then I'll figure out uh, how do we index uh, these table. Uh, for example, in this uh, um, uh, in this database, uh, for all these three tables, it looks like the ID table is a primary key, uh, and then there is also product ID with uh, which we use to join with other table. Yeah. Uh, so there, uh, I would create an index. Uh, by creating index, uh, this will actually run uh, much faster, and uh, the the queries will actually scale. 
Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, could you tell me a little bit more about why indexing uh, makes these queries more efficient? Uh, yeah, so uh, the way uh, indexing is going to work in the back end is uh, it's going to help uh, the SQL engine to actually pick the right uh, uh, data in a short time frame. Um, so mm -hmm. let's say um, so we are actually joining uh, these two user IDs. Um, then what? Um, so let's say the user ID is one, uh, and uh, it will basically look uh, for one in both these tables. Uh, if we yeah. index. SQL engine knows exactly where to go and grab uh, that uh, data uh, because it knows uh, it, the uh, ordering is going to be in either ascending or descending. Uh, so it can basically go either start uh, at the top or at the bottom and scan uh, for where it's going to get the one. Uh, so by indexing, we're actually making this uh, scanning process uh, uh, quicker, basically. Yeah, it's kind of like it created a hash map from of the index values to the rows in the table itself, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay, perfect. So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for joining us, Raj, and thank you everybody for watching. Um, good luck on your upcoming interviews. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.